What is up guys? This week we had some Darksiders 3 gameplay footage released. We got that new gameplay trailer, Enter the Flame Hollow, which was pretty cool. We also got a uh, IGN, you know, 11 minute type of thing, which was also pretty cool, I guess. It was cool to see them. It was cool to visually look at what was happening. Uh, the graphics do look good, and for the guys that don't know, the people that don't know, like Darksiders is not trying to go realistic. Uh, the creator of Darksiders, Joe Mad, he was like a comic book artist, so like they're kind of trying to stay in that like heavy Blizzard influence. Like they just try to keep it practical, which is what actually I really love about the series. Is one of the things. Anyways, it looked good. Uh, playing the first two games, I do understand that it's only some square, some square button combos, maybe some heavies in there, and some perfect dodges. You see that little power up with a red burst. But besides Super Saiyan Fury, we've seen a bunch of the same stuff. That 11 minute clip with basic combat, not to mention the player's skill level, was laughable at best. I didn't like the way I was feeling about my beloved series, so I decided to go into the internet and try to see if I could find a peace of mind and turn that frown upside down. Besides the entire Darksiders documentary, I'm going to name off a few reasons why I think Darksiders 3 is in good hands. First, I looked at the developers of Darksiders 3. They're a company known as Gunfire Games. Although with a new name, these are the same exact people who worked on Darksiders 1 and 2. Their first major project being the PlayStation 4 versions of Darksiders 2. I believe going back and remastering Darksiders 2 for the PlayStation 4 gave them a good opportunity to adjust for the better. And noting the company's history with the THQ bankruptcy, with all these people changing companies and living their lives, they finally decided to come back full circle to make Darksiders 3. And that to me shows me the passion that their creators have about the Darksiders franchise. And I guess I mention this because Darksiders series is underrated, and I always thought it would have just been one of those game series that got left in the dust by the new generation of consoles and gamers coming up. Which actually brings me to my next reason why I'm not too concerned about the Darksiders 3 franchise, is that the director of Gunfire Games, John Pearl, is very aware of this evolutionary process of time, stating, Darksiders 1 and 2 are very different, and I think Darksiders 3 needs to continue that. You know you're playing a Darksiders game, but at the same time it feels new. We didn't want to tread in the same path, maybe because of our own internal boredom. So we wanted to strike a balance between familiar elements like characters and mechanics, but each horseman has their own story that we want to tell. Within that, we change how they get around the world, how they fight, how they react to the world. Each one is unique and based on the character's perspective. So I think it's safe to say that they're confident in what they're doing and they're ready to bring in the new. And to close the video off with my final reason, if you go back and watch the Darksiders documentary, you can just straight up tell that the president of Gunfire Games, David Adams, is a straight up fan and just won't allow Darksiders 3 to fall short of the vision. I feel like he's a true gamer too, and I believe that sometimes it can be hard to know what a gamer wants if you're not a real gamer yourself. And I also believe that he has the understanding and the seasoned crew behind his back to make a great game. Find me strong enough, Samael. Yes, you have overcome many obstacles to stand here before me. But sometimes the hero dies in the end. Ask your brother. Will you surrender the key, or must I take it? Awesome. 